Greetings, members, one and all, of the Salvation Nation. How governments can confiscate your gold and why you wouldn't care. Let's explore! You heard that right. There's a way that they can get your gold and you wouldn't care one bit. Especially if you're already stacking gold. More than likely, you're probably thinking that they're going to take it away from you. And you would most certainly would care. That's not the kind of gold I'm talking about. Not in bar form like this or in coin form like this. They wouldn't necessarily need to get that stuff. Because there's a lot of gold out there that's in another form that they are starting to recycle. And that is the Royal Mint. I actually covered a story about this uh, last year. And uh, now they're taking it to the next level in this updated story by CNBC. Britain's Royal Mint is to build a plant that will extract gold from electronic waste. And that is something that they had tried in a pilot program. Next year, but the Canadian-based firm Exer to recover gold from circuit boards of cell phones and laptops. So therefore, essentially, they can take the gold from those devices that you're going to throw away anyway and confiscate it. And more than likely, if they're smart, if these uh, governments were smart, they would add it to their gold reserves. So let's see what this is about in this updated story. Because this is a statement that was updated from the previous announcement from October 2021 when I covered this story at the beginning. Britain's Royal Mint plans to build a facility that will extract gold from electronic waste with the plant set to be fully up and running in 2023. In a statement Monday, the government-owned company, which manufactures precious metal products and coins, said it would use what is called patented new chemistry from a Canada-based firm called Exer, Exer to extract to recover gold from circuit boards of cell phones and laptops. And by the way, there are videos on YouTube on how to do it, but it involves some very dangerous chemicals and a lot of time to make it happen. It's not an easy process for sure. I've got some circuit boards and stuff here with some gold plated on them, and uh, I just don't know how to get it off there without dangerous chemicals, and I don't want to go through that mess to do it. According to the Royal Mint, the process is able to recover over 99% of the precious metals contained within electronic waste, selectively targeting the metals in seconds. Wow, so targeting the metal in seconds. Now, obviously, there's a lot of silver in there, too. <clears throat> I wonder if they have something to extract that. The recovery is said takes place at room temperature, as opposed to the high temperatures required for smelters to process e-waste. The plant will be located in South Wales, United Kingdom, where the mint is based, with construction beginning this month. It said it expected the facility to process as much as 90 metric tons of circuit boards sourced from the UK each week. This would produce hundreds of kilograms of gold every year, it added. Now, that is not a whole lot of gold when it takes when you take into account the actual metal the amount of metal that that uh, of gold that is stored by the central bank of london um, but nonetheless there's still a lot of gold and every little bit helps especially in this day and age with prices at record highs so this is built off a of previous announcement from october 2021 in which the royal mint said it had signed an agreement with xir to roll out its technology in the uk in that release, the Mint said the process would potentially also recover copper, silver, and palladium. And all of those metals are quite valuable, especially these days, um, with silver prime being the least as far as the movement up. But there's going to come in time when we'll see that change. The widespread proliferation of technologies such as smartphones, tablets, and laptops has seen electronic waste become a topic of much debate and, discussed, and discussion in recent years. In 2019, the world produced around 53.6 million metric tons of e-waste, according to the Global E-Waste Monitor 2020 report. The report also said just 17.4% of this waste was officially documented 
as properly collected and recycled. So every little piece of uh, com old computer equipment you have, it's got gold in it. There's some gold in it somewhere in there and silver too. And uh, when you throw it away, obviously that's not, it's been, it's been confiscated by the landfill or what have you, the precious metals in there. Uh, but the government's going to take it. Uh, then they will uh, process it and confiscate it for their own good uh, or use. More than likely, the gold is produced. It'll come in a form like this, a raw form, or it comes out in these bars. Typically, that's kind of what happens. They consolidate them into those bars. And where do those bars go? More than likely, could go to produce coins or what have you. And I'm very curious. I wonder what consumer electronic device that we use every day contains the most gold. My guess is the home computer probably is my guess. It's something that's used every day may have more gold than any other device that you see out there. Uh, but it could be home stereo equipment too. Some of the connections there are gold plated, which have provide a great connection, uh, especially considering that gold does not react or tarnish. So gold tips are used for musical equipment, for some stereo equipment, for some of the connectors and the like. Now, again, it's one of those things where if you have the time and energy and, pro and chemicals and materials to be able to process it yourself and to do it, then hey, they're not going to get any of it. And by the way, that confiscation is something that uh, you probably won't care about because it's something you're throwing away anyway, which is the whole point. And uh, nonetheless, it's probably a good thing that this stuff gets recycled anyway. I don't know what happens to the other materials, if that's burnt up or, or if it's recycled in some way. But uh, nonetheless, the precious metals can be retained from them. And uh, presumably, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. It hasn't said so far yet what that's gonna, what, where that metal is going to go. So in addition to this low collection and recycling rate, the report also said e-waste contain harmful substances, including mercury, hydrochlorofluorocarbons, chlorofluorocarbons, and brominated flame retardants. As concerns about the environment and sustainability mount, companies like Exier are looking to roll out and monetize techniques focused on recycling and repurposing of e-waste. Others include New Zealand-based mint innovation. In 2020, Ali Crush, the company's chief scientific officer, told CNBC it had developed a biological process for recovering valuable metals from weird and wonderful feedstocks such as electronic waste. That's interesting. Crush explained the mince innovation systems involved taking scrap materials and grinding it up into a sand-like consistency. Well, and you talk about that, especially regarding biological process, you may remember a story I did about worms that, that produce silver. That was a pretty interesting story. And they found out that they had them in their system that had been after hundreds of thousands or thousands of years. Crush explained the mince innovation system involved taking scrap material and grinding it up into a sand-like consistency. The reason why we do this is that we need to make sure that we're exposing all the metal contained within to a subsequent chemical leaching process, he added. For instance, when you look at circuit boards, they've got lots of chips on them. A lot of the value is contained within those chips, so we really don't need. To, so we really need to make sure it's exposed. So fascinating story, fascinating technology. Uh, pretty cool that they're doing this, and it's just a matter of you giving over your devices, your old devices that you're not using anymore, <clears throat> and uh, they will be confiscated for their gold and silver. Well, gold in this case. And where would that gold go? It doesn't say. Presumably, it could go to pay the uh, the vendor here. In this case, X here. Um, and uh, we'll see how that's done. And it'll be used to pay uh, their employees. But some of it, hopefully, will go to uh, the Central Bank of the United Kingdom. We'll see. I don't know. Hundreds of kilograms per year. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty good amount of money. But... Who knows how much energy it takes to run the facility and the like? Will, will it pay for itself and then some? Who knows? It's anybody's guess. But fascinating indeed to see. And uh, they'll confiscate it and you won't care one bit. Let me know what your thoughts are about this. And again, several folks in the community have sent this to me and thought I had kind of already covered it. Uh, but this is a good update to see that they are actually implementing this by building a facility in order to process it there on site. 
in, in South Wales. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch this video and to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.